What's up, Kyle Gang? Welcome back to some mechanics and materials. So we got this pretty long problem here, but let's go ahead and get started with it. So we have this square hollow box here, and it's subjected to this axial force of P. And we also have this stress-strain diagram here. So our goal, let's start with problem one. Our goal is to find the elongation when the force is equal to 100 kilonewtons. So let's go ahead and get started. So really quick, I just drew this cross section here, just so it's easier to see what's going on. So let's go ahead and get started. So if we want to find elongation, that's going to be delta, right? How much longer does it get in length? Well, we need to find an equation for that. And uh, I lost my eraser, but yeah, what's that equation going to be? Well, let's just try to derive that first. So we know that stress is equal to the modulus of elasticity times strain. Cool. Well, strain has to do with delta, right? Delta strain is equal to the change in length over the original length. So this is what we're solving for. So we want to solve for first uh, the stress, or the strain, right? So if we're solving for strain, let's divide by E. We're going to get that stress over E is equal to strain. Well, we don't know what stress is, so stress can be expanded. Stress is force over area. So then you get that force over area times E is equal to strain. So let's plug in those numbers, right? So force, we said we're at 100 kilonewtons. Cross-sectional area, let's solve for area over here because that's just going to be useful. So area, right, we're going to take this square. This is the area we're solving for. So of course, this big square is going to be 50, mil, 50 times 50, and then this inner square is 40 times 40, right? Because each side has a length of 5. So this inner square is going to be 40 by 40. So if we want to find the area, we're going to take 50 squared, subtract it from 40 squared. Right? So that tells us that our area is 900 millimeters squared. Now what else do we don't know? We don't know what E is, so we need to solve for E. So that's our modulus of elasticity. So if we go to this graph over here, this is our, uh, what is it, elastic region, right? It's this linear line until it changes slope. So for this, this is our slope of this is going to be equal to the modulus elasticity. So let's solve for E, right? So we know our slope, it's a linear line, it's going to be just 250, but it's in megapascals, so multiply that by 10 to the 6, over, right, 0 0.00125, 0, 0, 0, 0, right? You do that, you get that E is equal to 200 gigapascals. Okay, so we have two nice numbers here. Now we can solve here. So we're going to put 900 on the bottom, along with that 200. Right? These units are going to cancel out pretty nicely, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, I did not do a good job. Okay, 5.56 times 10 to the negative fourth millimeters per millimeter. Okay, so cool, we found this. So what does this tell us? Well, it tells us where we're going to be at on our graph, right? 5.56 times 10 to the negative fourth millimeter per millimeter. It's going to be somewhere around here, right? This tells us we're going to be below this point, right? So that means that we're still in our plastic region, or in our, our elastic region, excuse me. All right, so our point is somewhere around here, and it's somewhere like in this range. So we're still in our elastic region, so we can solve for it uh, as if elongation is just going to be normal. So now that we have this, we can go back to this equation here. So we're solving for change in length, so let's multiply the original length over. To get that L times epsilon is equal to the change in L. So now all we have to do is plug in our numbers, right? We know our length is 600 millimeters. So I did it. 600 times 5.56, 10, 10 to the negative 4 is equal to the change in L. And you do this, and you get the change in L is equal to 0 0.333 millimeters. All right, so that's part A right there. Now we need to move on to part B. All right, so let's solve for part two now. So it's saying, what is the permanent elongation if we increase our force to 360 kilonewtons? So yeah, now we're pulling a lot harder, and what's gonna happen is we might cross this point where we're no longer in the elastic region. And then what's gonna happen is when we let go, our length is no longer gonna be 600 millimeters, it's gonna increase in length. So that's our goal, is to find the increase in length if it does that at all. So let's start out by saying, are we even in, are we even past the elastic region, right? If we're staying in the elastic region, when we let go of that strength, it doesn't elongate at all. So we need to make sure we're past 250 for our stress. So stress is equal to force over area, right? So we want to find if our stress is over 250. So we know our force now is 360 kilonewtons, so 10 to the third, over 900 millimeters, so 900, this is 10 to the negative six. So you solve for strain here. 
and you get that's equal to 400 megapascals. And 400 megapascals is greater than 250 megapascals, right? So this means that we're in our, we're past our plastic region, our inelastic region. So let's draw 400 on this line. So 400 is probably about here. Now our goal is to find what this is here. What, what value of epsilon is this? You know, why do we need that? Well, it's because now when we enter this past this elastic region, we're gonna follow this line for a stress strain diagram. But when we let go, we're gonna go back down like this, and this slope is gonna be E, right? Our modulus of elasticity that we found. So if we can find this point, then our goal is to find this point because this length, right, that's our permanent, that's our permanent elongation or our permanent set is what it's called. So we're solving for this point here, right? We're trying to find this value of X or, of our strain, but first we need to find this value. So how can we find that, right? But we can use the slope formula, right? So M is slope here, it's not mass. We're using slope, right? Y is equal to MX plus B. Slope is just used as M. So we're trying to find the slope of this line here. So we know that it's gonna be 500, right? Rise over run, 500 minus 250 over 0 0.05 minus 0 0.00125. But our slope is not only equal to that, our slope is the same as 400 minus 250 over epsilon minus that. Right? So, how do we do that? Well, we can put this as 400 minus 250 over epsilon 1 is what the value we're going to use here. I guess epsilon 2. Let's use epsilon 2. 2 minus 0 0.00125. All right, both of these are going to have the same slope, and we only have this one unknown. We're not really interested in what the actual slope is. I guess we can do that, though. Okay, so how are we gonna solve this? Well, um, it's just a number question. So I think I'm gonna skip how to solve it. Now I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do one step. So 1.95 times 10 to the negative fourth. Right, I, what I did is I took the inverse of both of these, so they got flipped over, is equal to epsilon two minus 0 0.00125 over uh, 150, right? Now this is pretty easy to solve for epsilon two. So I'm gonna write that over here, epsilon two is equal to 0 0.0305 millimeters per millimeter. Okay, so now we found out what this number is here. All right, this epsilon two, we found out what this is. So now we just need to find how much it goes back, right? We're trying to find this distance. That's our permanent set right there. So how do we do that? Well, basically we just want to find what the x-coordinate of this point is. And guys, I have a big surprise for you. We're going back in time. We're going back to seventh grade and we're gonna use point slope formula, right? What is point slope formula? Y minus Y1 is equal to M X minus X1. All right, point slope formula. I guess we can use two here, two here. So first of all, let's solve for M. M is just this equation. Um, let's see, did I solve it on here? Yeah, M, M is equal to 200 times 10 to the third. So that right there is just what this is equal to if you solve it. So let's plug in our numbers, right? So y2, y2 is gonna be the height of this 400. So this is 0 0.2, this is 0 0.1. So it'll be like that. This is two, this is one. So y2 is gonna be 400. y1 is equal to zero. That's equal to the slope, 200, 10 to the third. x2, like we found out, right? That's epsilon two, that's the number we just found here. 0 0.0305 minus x1. x1 is this point here, that's what we're solving for. We want this. So I'm gonna label this, uh, did I label it x? Yeah, I did x. So cool, now we have this point slope formula equation. Let's just solve it really quick. So 5,700 equal to 200, 10 to the third times x, right? I just distributed that, added it over. It's a pretty simple algebra equation. You do this, you get x is equal to 0 0.0285 millimeters per millimeter. All right, so how do we visualize this? Well, that's this point here, right? This distance is 0 0.0285. And that's basically what's gonna happen when we let go of it. Our length is gonna come down to this, or our elasticity, right? Or not elasticity, but that's what's gonna be our new normal. So this is permanent set.
but that's not permanent uh, elongation, right? Permanent elongation is we have to multiply it by the length of our figure. So we know that it elongates 0.0285 millimeters per milliliter. To cancel that, we need to multiply it by the length in millimeters. So to do that, we're gonna take 600 millimeters, and multiply it by that 0.0285 millimeters per millimeter. And these millimeters are gonna cancel, and we're just gonna be left with permanent elongation is equal to 17.1 millimeters. So pretty cool, right? Uh, yeah, so that's how you get from here to here. Not too tricky. This whole question was pretty long. It's about understanding the concepts, right? Understanding what's gonna happen when we pass that elastic zone and we move out of that. And then what's gonna happen when we let go of that stress? It's gonna shrink back down, but not all the way. So yeah, that's how you solve these kind of problems. If you have any questions, feel free to check out my channel. I got a whole lot of videos on topics like these. Uh, feel free to let me know in the comments below if you have any questions, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.